how do I want to show up, you know, as a, as a team? How do I want to show up for myself? So I'm really, really excited to drop that in. Okay, we are actually live right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you, say hello, all that good stuff. So hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday speaker series here at Cannabis Nurses of Color. We are so excited to have you guys here. I'm looking here, I'm looking there because I'm sharing this out. So if you're live with us right now, go ahead and share this. This is going to be a super wonderful discussion and also some tools that you guys can use to reset, recalibrate, rebalance, come back to yourself because we know as nurses, as caregivers, um, you know, we're always pretty much giving and sometimes we're not filling back up. So I am so excited to have our speaker here today, Dr. Jamal. And I'm going to kill your last name. Is it Fruster? Fruster. <laughs> You got Brewster. it. <laughs> Brewster. So we're super excited to have him here. If you guys are in our Cannabis Nurses of Color group, please check in there because we actually posted this morning a just a wonderful meditation. That meditation just blessed us so much. Um, yes. So thank you so much for that, um, Dr. Jamal, because I literally was like, let's see, let's see, you know, let's see what this meditation is about here. And, and in <laughs> 10 minutes, I felt like, you know, just it was so a reset just filled up again. Yes. It was like, yeah. okay, mm. it's like I'm in control here. I am in control. <laughs> like I'm in control of me, you know, yes. so definitely tap into that meditation if you haven't already. Um, and then I'm going to put this live in the group. We are live. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in to us for the first time, we are Cannabis Nurses of Color. We are a safe space that was created for black and brown nurses in the cannabis community, in the cannabis industry. Um, myself and my uh, lovely partner and co-founder, Ivory Rosenthal Davis. Hello, Ivory. Let's see. Did we lose Ivory? She's frozen. All right, so we're gonna keep going here, but I'm gonna take a minute while Ivory gets back on to introduce Dr. Jamal because he has uh, such an, no, we're not live. I'm not sure what's happening. I just can't see your video. That's all, sis. You're doing great. No, you can't see my video. Okay. That's that's it. You're doing that's great. That's it. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna use another camera then because I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, all right, anywho. So we'll be back, but if you guys can hear me, my video will be back in a second. Um, so today we are super excited because we're always talking about like how to do this and how to do that, but really we never spend a lot of time on how to care for ourselves. We're always mm. talking about how to be better nurses and better caregivers and better providers for everybody else. But do we take that time and that energy and put it back to ourselves? So. I'm gonna introduce Dr. Jamal real quick because he is, so I was kind of stalking him on Instagram uh, <laughs> and I saw that he was a life coach for burned out nurses and physicians. And I'm like, man, he is gonna have a job for the rest of his life. Uh, <laughs> Especially now. Because <laughs> we, we burned out and we tired, we fatigue, we have compassion fatigue, we have all these things. But Dr. Jamal is a life coach. He's also a chiropractor. And if y'all follow me at all, you know that chiropractic is super important in my life. Um, it's one of those wonderful modalities that really does um, just bring you back to self and helps you stay. I feel like it primes your pump. You know, you, when I go to the chiropractor, I feel like it's a great reset. And then I'm able to use that to kind of keep going through mm -hmm. the rest of the week. So love chiropractic. <laughs> He's also a thought leader who helps, like I said, doctors and nurses prevent burnout, but he takes that and he shifts it into living powerfully once more. So it's not just about, you know, you're burned out, you're not gonna be burned out. It's like, no, let's take this energy, let's take this power, let's use it in, in, a, in a positive way. And so just like the meditation I spoke of earlier that he shared with us, I mean, it really empowered me. I felt in control and I felt like I can take on the next challenge which was just like getting myself together to get on here because you know it's it's like oh all the, the to do's that we have to do and sometimes those things are overwhelming so thank you for that he's and also an advocate for too, reminding to yourself to breathe that's what i that's what i appreciate yes it's like yeah thank Permission you to breathe i love it so he's also <laughs> 
He's also an advocate for healthcare providers. And Jamal has helped doctors and nurses across the world free themselves of the pattern. Ooh, that word, patterns of burnout and be themselves once more around their loved ones and remember why they got into healthcare in the first place. Because I think we ask ourselves that so often. As an expert in discovering the root cause of burnout, he's been featured as a guest on today's Thought Leader and the Daily Dose podcast. He also has his own podcast that's called Soul Coffee. Um, and he's doing all these amazing things. And I know that you're just opening a practice this week, right? Oh my God, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So August exciting. 2nd, we open doors. Yes. Huh? So talk to us, Jamal, Dr. Jamal, come on in. Welcome. Oh my goodness. Such love, such energy. I'm so excited to be here, y'all, for real. And one shout out to the fact that this is cannabis nurses of color. Like, Ooh. let's let's just acknowledge that. Like, we got yeah. some curls on the call, you know what I mean? Got a little <laughs> bit of melanin, you know what I mean? And that's highly important. Um, as it's been a blessing the last year or two, you know, really coming into uh, this facilitation, you know, whether it's chiropractic, whether it's coaching, but just want to acknowledge, you know, anyone that might be tuning in for even tuning in, if that word so that we've heard about so much burnout, as I'm not that my work is shifting away from it, but it's like, I'm really trying to pull people from that because mm. so many people are saying it now. And that's because people are recognizing these societal patterns, these generational patterns, these racial patterns that have allowed for us to work. And I'll, I'll, I'll start things off with, you know, I'll even challenge, it's not the work that you're burnt out from, it's the resistance in doing the work. It's the unalignment or the misalignment of your soul or at a depthful level of doing things that you want to do, but not how you want to do them. And um we feel that at a depthful level and after you've done it for so it's like it's like driving with the e-brake on you can do it but it's going to burn up your brakes it's going to smell horrible because them tires are burning or those brake pads are burning and mm -hmm. you're going to experience symptomatology whether it's i imagine depression anxiety insert insert symptomatology here when you've hit your point of breaking down so mm -hmm. i'd like to get to you before then but if not, I got plenty of resources and people to also help facilitate you out of there as well. So I'm, yes. I'm just really excited to be here. Yes. Well, we are so excited to have you. And I think one of the things that you mentioned really is, you know, the word burnout, I think, is a tough word. Because I think people don't know. Sometimes it may not be the burnout like we think, like, oh, you're working all these shifts. It's not necessarily that. It's the burden of um, not having... Uh, like it's like a, not having a filter right so you're absorbing all of this stuff at mm -hmm. work outside in the media here there and it's it's like you need to have some kind of filter system like before you absorb all this energy and all this stuff that's out there and you know and then taking that and now you have to put your output like what are you going to give to the world and trying to mm. figure out like okay well what do i give back when i have all this <laughs> you know what yeah. i'm saying like mm -hmm all this chaos inside because I feel like we you know if you're an entrepreneur if you because we have a lot of entrepreneurial nurses um, if yep. you're an entrepreneur you have those you know demands um, if you have a family you have those demands you know if you have the, mm -hmm. the workplace demands the the internal self you know like you know you have goals and aspirations and dreams that sometimes we kind of say well eh, I ain't got time for that right now because <laughs> <laughs> That's that's that true. I was listening, right. Sandra, to one of our nurses, um, Tamara, just not not um a little while ago on a live, and she was saying the same thing about how she's been intentional and in resetting and allowing Sunday to be for self care. Mm -hmm. And I and I hear another nurse, and I and I try to apply that too. She says that you have to fill your own cup, and then once you at a point to where you're able to run over, you give everybody else your overflow right mm -hmm. and i don't think we do that we try to give 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 but we, we have to fill our own cup so I'm, I'm trying to be intentional and tell myself that too and then once i'm well i'm at an overflow and then i can give that overflow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. this is good i agree guys i'm so glad you mentioned that as this analogy has deepened a little bit for me and what's come up lately with some some coaching and with chiropractic as well First of all, I want to acknowledge, you know, the entrepreneurial burnout and, you know, talking mm. and connecting to Sandra, you know, the, I imagine the nurses that are tuning into this group and, you know, that deal with cannabis and you 
are of color, those are two other factors that, let's be real, you know, our white counterparts don't need to incur in, in the racial side of things. But Sandra worded it so beautifully. She's like, you're introducing this illegal, this mystical, or this, this, uh, this certain perception of cannabis and there can be resistance internally. Maybe your, your integrity is being challenged. So before you even go out into the world, you're trying to navigate with mm -hmm. these inner, these, these thoughts. And with the way I think about, you know, I, I have a coaching pr uh, process taking people through. And the first step is awareness and awareness of the vessel, awareness of the car. Before we even know where we're trying to go, before we paint that picture, mm. you know, we got to be aware of the car. And these internal thoughts are like weights, heavy, mm. heavy weights. So it's like you can start driving, even though you didn't check the oil. You don't even know what you're trying to listen to, your thoughts. You don't even know what you're tuning into. And it's like <laughs> there's so much weight and you haven't even you haven't even gotten out of bed yet. And that's right. very important to, to acknowledge. So uh, when it comes to, you know, you got to be in an abundance for sure. You got to be overfilled. Well, the thing that I've, I've thought about with the full cup analogy, that means just eventually you are going to pour out. So mm -hmm. something that we can do for both our patients, our practice members that we're looking after, and for our peers is to beat that full cup and strive to stay full. Mm -hmm. And it's not that you're pouring into other people necessarily, but you're inviting them to go get some, go get some uh, reverse osmosis water themselves to fill themselves up with. Oh you don't God. have to pour out, but instead they're inspired to fill themselves up. Wow. Hilarious. Yes. Yeah. I love it. So Y'all got me I charged. Have, I have a question, yeah. Dr. Jamal. What do you feel is the biggest like barrier for people to like before we even get to burnout? Like, what do you think is the biggest barrier for us to prevent burnout? Mm, mm, mm. I mean, I, you just said it. It's it's boundaries. Mm -hmm. I feel as though you know a lot of people don't have an awareness of of boundaries, and when I say boundaries. I mean, the ability to, to kind of like construct yourself. So we'll just stay with that water, right? So you can keep filling your cup, keep filling your cup. You can eat good. You can eat all the organic food. You sleep in seven, eight hours somehow. Um, you have great, great thoughts. You have good community, all these things. But if you don't address what's on the bottom of that cup, you keep leaking, you know, what's, what's on the bottom of that cup. It doesn't matter how much you pour into yourself because you're just going to continue once more to just leak out. So these boundaries can look like, um, uh, just being the ability to say no. Mm. Say this again, the ability, because it's a skill, it's an ability. You got to put energy to say no, because we're in, in the health professional realm from even before, like y'all went to undergrad, even before y'all went to that nursing program, like mm -hmm. perhaps there's this want to, I want to be a nurse. Well, what does it take? You have to go through certain exams. There's like, even in undergrad, you're beginning to build these patterns of just needing to be a slave to the system or I just need to do this because it's always been that way or it's super competitive. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. even from the inception or even from the beginning before you are birthed, you know, as this RN or as this, you know, APRN or whatever, whatever phase of the journey you might be on, there's these patterns that have been given to you from this society of, that's, that's so quick to use the wheels, if you will, of this system that are the people and we just squeeze the life out of them. So it's like, you know, if you don't have boundaries to say no, to, you know, step away from work and they're not that that's an easy thing, but then there's these forces of guilt, forces of shame, forces of, oh, you don't want to help people. Or, and it's just like, no, I just really need to take care of myself. So I can wow. expand further on the boundaries, but I want to just allow for that to kind of like sink in and ask the question as I want people to, you know, really reflect on this themselves. Uh, where are you lacking in mm. personal boundaries for yourself? And just, just sit on that. Wow. Wow. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's awesome. I mean, it's something that we know because as nurses, we're always talking about like, you know, the process, you know, and how the system is and how, you know, nurses eat their young, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, there's, all these, there's all these things that are built into like what nursing is about. And I know, you know, if we're speaking specifically 
to nurses in general, there's like all these things that we have to contend with. But when you're talking about cannabis nurses specifically, then that's like, this is like, we basically, we have jumped off a cliff with no parachute and we're not really sure if anybody's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna catch us on the way down. So, <laughs> that's what happens when you become a cannabis nurse, just letting you know. So is that, and it's also, you know, that we've worked so hard we've jumped through the hoops we've created this career we've done these things and now we're in this space where it's kind of like okay you're about to go off on this limb you know remember all the work you did remember what it meant remember all the requirements remember all the then and remember the da, 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 you know and then because there's no you know just because you would understand this as a car but there's no certification for cannabis nursing so it's almost like i don't have that little badge that says you supposed to do this you know what i'm saying and so we're I'm working, legit right, right yeah so there's a lot of that that people are, are are dealing with in in this particular role right on top of what they've come with into this role as being nurses so it i mean everything you're saying makes like complete sense um and then and then we add some layers to it yeah. there's layers and uh, i mean I, I love shrek you know, because I love the whole analogy, like there's layers, like the onion example, yes. right? As there's so many layers and as a chiropractor, you know, I can relate to y'all in that capacity as there's this certain, I'll just say there's this perception of chiropractic and first and foremost, like people think of a registered nurse or people think of a cannabis nurse, they don't think of Sandra, they don't think of Ivory. If people think of me as a chiropractor, they don't picture this this tatted tan man with dreadlocks and, and, and you know, some hoop earrings. It's 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 this perception racially that we got to push up but professionally you know in the united states i got to push up this like rock of chiropractic because of people's perceived notions so you know there's the people that you want to help i imagine then there's the people once more your community which community y'all like that is everything there is this phenomenon real quick that I've noticed in my profession, and it's called, I, I kind of called it like self-islanding phenomenon. So mm -hmm. people go through school, especially now you can go through pretty much majority online, um, minimal interactions. You don't have to engage with your peers to pass, but you know, I, I'm a big community guy, but mm -hmm. then when you graduate, you know, there's only about 95,000 chiropractors in the whole world, but in the United States, there's probably about 50 to 60 that are licensed, 50, 60,000. Mm -hmm. So you could go to like a city and you're all by yourself. And when you're all by yourself, you don't have the awareness, you don't have the perception, you don't have the motivation or the inspiration. You don't got people around you doing what you're doing. And it's it's hard, like it's hard because you're by yourself and where that can reflect, there we go. And where, where we reflect is like, you know, whether you're working at a hospital still as a cannabis nurse and you're going on this venture, or even if you, if, if you already made the jump and you know, you're creating your own business, your own practice, there's this opportunity to build community as that's literally one of your most potent resources just like sandra and ivory are on this call they there's a resonance like there's a unspoken and spoken you know um um relatability mm -hmm. golden thread between them that it's like man sis thank you for seeing me like Mm -hmm. And they may, not, they may not even need to say anything to each other. But if you don't have that community, you are setting yourself up for that much more resistance. It's like you being not in the community. It's like you're pulling the e-brake on life on yourself that much more when, baby, it doesn't need to be like that. So efforting to build community is everything. Yes. You know, the meditation that you did, going back to that, because this reminds me that you talked about having like wings and you show you gave us a visual and a physical way of having these wings right and i will be honest with you i was like wow you know that's such a such a great metaphor because i feel like sometimes we feel so small and you mentioned like you know your wings can be as wide you know as fluffy as what I, you know it was just still the visuals but what i loved about that was like wow this is a way to really connect with other people because sometimes i feel like my wings are so small because pandemic, because this, because people are inside, because of my, Ooh. because of what I feel that people are wanting to do or willing to do. But the truth is that my wings can be as big as I want them to be and that I can actually get out of my, um, my comfort zone more when I tap into the resources that already exist within my community, because the community, we have a community that's here to lift each other up. And to say that, I'm saying that, and I'm also going to read some of the comments that people are putting in here. So, uh, Tashiana Stark says, we tired. <laughs> that was her thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? 
is a true mm-hmm. thing. You know, it, it's, <laughs> we tired. Yes, we tired. Um, she said, "What are the first signs of burnout? So we are better at recognizing them to get so- help sooner than later." Mm. Great question. And I just want to. I just want to connect. It was. No, was it Tatiana or was it Tiana? Tatiana. Tasha. Tashiana. Tashiana. Pardon me. These headphones, man. They they work oh, and they're doing fine. their best. I feel you, sis. Like, I feel you. I've been there. And I think that's important to say, like, I'm not just this. Like, burnout can look like this. Take a good look because I've been there. It happened early to me in my my uh, my chiropractic career and the recognition of my peers, like around midterms and finals. People are just freaking dead. Mm. they're dead because you go into school and I don't gotta explain this to you but if you have a child quick sa- shout out to all the moms and dads that might be tuning into this call and any of the grandmas any of the aunties anyone that helped raise something because I've seen the parents going through school and I, I was just always blown away because it, it takes away any excuses any single or if you don't have a child it's like you have no excuses you have no excuses because if this parent is going through this program, taking 25 to 30 credits per quarter, and they're banging this thing out, it's like, what's what's driving them? It's purpose. It's like, it's like it's, it's, it's coming from this, this, this deeper place. But man, I'll ask the question, you know, you tired, but is that where you want to stay? Mm. You tired <laughs> now, but where do you want to be? You tired now, but what's a 10 out of 10 look like in your life, Tashiana? So I, I'm, I'm here for it, sis. And just know once more, we going somewhere else. And, you know, I'll probably close things out whenever we do with a meditation for y'all. So stay tuned. But what are some of the first signs of burnout? The three big signs of burnout. First and foremost, Tashiana already said it. It's emotional exhaustion. Mm-hmm. You tired of being tired. So Tashiana's mm-hmm. tired. But when you tired of being tired, like, you know, yeah. let, let's talk some more. But I don't even want you to go there. And emotional exhaustion, that just, you wake up, you, you're not recuperated, you're tired. It's like, you know, emotions are energy and motion. I'm gonna slow down for a sec because it's mm. really, really important. I want y'all to get this. You know, whether it be happiness, whether it be sadness, these are all, it's it's biochemistry. Mm. <laughs> these all, it's 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 in our cells, it's in our body. And you're due to molecules of emotion. It's a beautiful book, by the way, in case anyone wants to check that out. And I got, I got some books for y'all. Um, it's very important because you're only supposed to feel those emotions for about 90 seconds. If you're feeling it more than 90 seconds, minutes, days, um, weeks, that's becoming a part of your personality or your personal reality. And it's time to evaluate the root cause of things and why this is now becoming your temperament, emotional exhaustion. Let me know if any other questions come up or if you got any, y'all got any questions, Sandra or Ivory, uh, come about it. Let me let me comment on that real quick because Please. um just speaking of Tashiana saying we tired, which is just that that sums it up. Um, but we're seeing it in more than just Tashiana. Cause one of the things that I tell people, I like, you know, we blame everything on the pandemic. That's our excuse for now. We have a legitimate excuse. But if we just stay there for a second and just think about what's going on, I tell people in the nursing profession that I think that the next pandemic, if that's the right word for it, is the fact that I don't think that people see this burnout that I see, I hear every day. Um, I see nurses leaving um, nursing, leaving healthcare, leaving the clinical side, the bedside every day. And I don't think that we as a society has taken that has you know just taken a moment to realize what the impact is. And I'll give a I'll give a personal um uh, um, a personal, I guess, testimony or whatever. It's not really a testimony, but experience. Last week, I had a, a um, a I had a recruiter to contact me in regards to a care manager job. So, sort of like a case manager. So anyway, she went all through the realm about the job, whatever, whatever. I knew pretty much early on that it wasn't for me personally, but for the most part, she was saying a lot of good things, even the salaries, not too many times that I say that the salary was pretty much fair. So even though I, it wasn't a fit for me, I reached out to my local network of case managers and I say, Hey, this is a job. This is what's going on. Yada, 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 whatever, whatever. Four out of four told me no. (laughs) And they said no, because it was not remote. So what that tells me, or it wasn't, you know, wasn't the flexibility of work from home. It was one of those jobs where you had to actually go into the facility. So in a sense, I was happy because I'm like, nurses are 
they they clapping back. We're clapping back. We're 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 making demands. We're saying we're tired, and this is what we want. And no, we're not just going to take anything. But at the same time, I think the bigger picture is to see there are so many nurses like Tashiana just said. We're they're tired. We're tired. And I don't know if um, it, it worries me from a public health standpoint. It's basically mm-hmm. what I'm saying. So I'm glad yeah. that um, that she shared that. No, thank you. Yeah, no, and that's huge. As there is a there is a mass exodus going on with nurses, as what call what it is what the pandemic or what COVID revealed was the unsustainability of the current frame of healthcare, and that there is a massive freaking need to change because this is just one. Y'all don't think this is going to happen again? Y'all don't think that this is going to happen again? It's just a matter. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. And when when it happens. What's going to happen then? Are there because there was there was already a nursing shortage, yeah. Right. See, mm-hmm. like there was already a nursing shortage. So if these businesses that are now called hospitals don't take mm. care of their employees and don't recognize <laughs> the unsustainable nature and patterns, and that they are you're, you're they're literally bleeding these nurses of their life energy and these physicians of their life energy it's not going to last. So it's like, do, do you want, do y'all want, not y'all, but do, is the system going to fall flat on its face or is something going to happen internally? And there it's gotta be both, but it comes with the acknowledgement. It comes with the expression of more of Tashiana speaking out and saying, yo, we tired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's challenging too. I think of it from a, as a patient, right? So I'll give you an example. My doctors are burned out. So now I can't see my doctors when I want to see them because they're not mm. there anymore. <laughs> they're like, mm. by the way, well, I'm only going to be coming in two days a week now. And I'm coming to the location closest to my home. And I ain't fooling with y'all every day of the week. So that's it. So like, for instance, I get injections in my neck. I have to wait uh, till August two months to see this doctor because she's basically like, I'm reclaiming my life. And that means that I'm not going to be available. And it's sad Mm. is the good doctor, you know what I'm saying? And I'm willing to, but I'm willing to wait because I feel like, you know, this is somebody I want to see. Right. Um, but even my primary care doctor, I went to see her. She's like, I'm only here two. I don't even know. This is very limited times a month. People are leaving and also exercising their right to have work life balance, even if it means, they just gonna, you know, work part time, sometime, whatever it is, because I think the pandemic just by the it offered us an opportunity. You know what I mean? It offered us an opportunity to see what life could be like <laughs> without mm. the stresses, right? I mean, there were stresses. I'm not gonna yep. say the pandemic was easy for everybody, but it offered us an opportunity to see what life could be like at a different pace. Um, mm. And, and I think people are not ready. You know, I always say the world is open, but I'm still like, I'm like on that, you know, I'm on that little, the conveyor belt in the airport, that kind of speed and people on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and everybody else on the treadmill, you know, I'm like, I'm still here, <laughs> la la lying. But I think that's pretty much it is that some people are like, I can't go back to the way things were, but we've never done it, not the way things yep. were. We, we not, we're not supposed to. We don't to. know what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to. And that's why it's very yeah. important, you know, for us to have community. And two things you said that are very important just now, you're willing to wait mm. to honor your doctor to August, uh, to August till you see mm-hmm. them because they're a good doctor. That's very important because that kind of leads into a second aspect of, you know, well, what does burnout look like? Cynicism. So if you are, you can get snippy, quote unquote, or you're just tired of being around the people that you're around or depersonalization is the big word. And depersonalization is you just start seeing either your practice members or your patients like money signs, like it's just a dehumanizing kind of aspect to it. And with your doctor being like, yeah, nah, I want to, I got to draw a boundary, you know, to when I see people, Mm -hmm. she's protecting herself and ultimately protecting her quality of rapport and connection that y'all have already clearly established. And I'd even say that that's so precious because there's a number of physicians that suck at people skills. Like they don't know how to communicate with people because they don't even know who they are. Yeah. Um, but well, that's a whole nother fired. tangent conversation. <laughs> yeah. You fire those like, people immediately. I'm like, I don't have time to deal with that. I think there's also a part of nur- of nurses and, and, and physicians where 
you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and she was like, oh, such and such, that doctor, I don't like them because they don't have good bedside manner. And I said something and then I had to come home and kind of take a look at myself because I said, well, I just go in there. I don't expect, I'm not expecting like this bedside care. I'm just expecting me to tell him what the issue is and him to tell me what to do about it. <laughs> like, you know, in this particular scenario, I said, because I pretty much already know what it is that I want before I get there only because I'm a nurse and you know I've already researched all these things so I'm coming in there with input and you know before the doctors are already giving me their you know diagnosis or whatever I'm giving you my emotions my feelings my documentation of all the symptoms I've had what I think it is all the things but not everybody goes to the doctor like that right some people just go in there and they really are in a place of um you know, needing this person as a higher resource for information, right? So it's not that I always go to the doctor and know everything, but I think sometimes as caregivers, we go into these situations and we're not even expecting care. We're like trying to be parallel to the caregiver, right? As opposed to like, <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Like, as opposed to like, hey, I'm here for you to care for me. But because mm -hmm. I feel like the system is so flawed, I'm just going to tell you what it is I want you to do. OK, um, and that's a terrible that's a terrible thing to do and be because I'm paying you like, you know, I'm paying you. You're getting paid to care for me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not giving you the opportunity to step up and do that because I've already created all the reasons why you're not going to do it well based on the system that we're used to or you know that we're presented this, this is good as what it hints at it's uh it's an inability to receive to an extent it's an inability to receive as uh you know there's this very and i say this energetically i'll say real quick feminine masculine energies aren't pertaining to the anatomy of a person everyone's made of these different energies and yeah i'll, I'll keep it as simple as that this masculine needing to do 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 is a is a part of our very patriarchal society that stems from deep roots of colonization and all these different things but all that to say there's been a need to effort to get to where we're at at this moment and where we can go with healthcare, where we can go with a society is the rise of the of the feminine energy which is the ability to receive the ability to really like take care of like oneself and receive from oneself. So, um, and I imagine you're not alone. And it's interesting, you know, as as care providers, there's this hint of pride as well. It's like, all oh, right, well, I already know what's going on with me or oh, I don't need that or because I know X, Y, Z, not that y'all do or not that y'all uh, projecting that, but there's this pride that just needs to come and it comes with the humility. It comes to be like, come here, let me just hug you. Like, let me just, like, even my people might, um like when it comes to taking care of people in tucson or everything or everything it's like oh well i know this 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 it's like shut up and receive like you are here to receive it's like get on this table and get this love so it, it's it's cool to that that you reflected that and it kind of ties into the last point which is like the three the three signs you can kind of keep aware of to answer that last question it's lack of personal achievement and long short that can manifest in it's just like you feel like you're not being effective with your people they might be keep coming in, keep coming in, shoot, they might leave, they might come back a few weeks later, a few months later. And it comes from this, I need to fix you kind of mindset versus you as healing facilitators, you don't fix anything, the body does, even medicine to an extent. It can take care of the symptoms until the body reorganizes itself intelligently enough to take care of itself. Are there limitations of matter in the body? Of course, however, when you're coming from this, I need to fix you mindset, turn that back on yourself. I need to like fix me mindset. Well, it's like, if you knew how to fix yourself already, you wouldn't be here right now. So that's the invitation that we get to dive into as we're ushering ourselves back in from this burnt out mentality or going there to taking care of oneself, one's dreams, one's vital life, one's whatever you want to do. And that's up to you to decide. That's good. Sandra, you, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You on mute, though. I said, I think that it's hard, you know, to, to shift, but I think that there's something really powerful in that shift. You know what I'm saying? There's something powerful there. Go ahead, Ivory. I know you were going to say something. 
No, I was just going to say, I, th- I thought that that was a good point that Dr. Jamal made. And in my mind, I kept thinking, um, when you think about that shift and making that shift, I-, I just, my words that have been in my head, at least for about the last week, is being purposeful and intentional and setting that nice. expectation. Yeah, setting that expectation for myself and being purposeful. Because as I want to say, somebody commented on that too in the group as well about by nature, we, we feel like, which we do, we we protect and we care for others. And I guess sometimes we feel, you know, that doesn't include us. And it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay for us to be included in that. And we're not being selfish for being included. So that's where that purpose yes. and, that, and that intention come from to say, it's okay to care yes. for self. Yeah. You deserve it. That's the th- yeah. that's the thing. I'm so glad you said that, Ivory. Like, you deserve it. Like, you deserve to be held. You deserve to be mm-hmm. catered to. You deserve to take care of. It's like, you out here providing, 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 but who's providing for you? Oh my God. Yourself? Yeah. You don't, you don't have to. That's literally, there's a safety pen cycling chiropractic. Long, short picture of safety pen. One end is the brain. One end is the tissue cell. When there's a disconnection in the nervous system, that safety pen cycle, it's no longer complete. So that way there's aberrant motion. There's there's a disinformation. There's, there's misinformation communicating from tissue cell to brain cell and brain cell to tissue cell. Therefore, the body cannot make the efficient and powerful adaptations that it needs to because it's not complete. If you're not allowing yourself to be fed like you're feeding into others, there is a, we call it a subluxation, but there is a disconnection. There is an interference in the nervous system of you receiving and giving that you're missing out on you're you're thus missing out on life now what does that life look like i don't know just like even with someone's pain when someone's like can you fix me doc i'm like nope <laughs> you're gonna fix yourself however i'm gonna be i'm gonna hold the container for you i'm gonna ref- i'm gonna be a mirror for you so that way you can take a good look at your life and what's happening with your movement with your recuperation emotional spiritual trauma physical trauma so that way you can be aware once more of these patterns that are keeping you interfered with keeping you disconnected keeping you from not feeling yourself and letting your cup drain once more back to that analogy so as a life coach it's like before your problems manifest physically I hold the space for them so that way we can deconstruct them mentally so that way you can have the awareness so that way you don't need me to live. You don't need me to, to just do, but use me as a bridge of where you want to be in accountability mm-hmm. and integrity. And when I say integrity, I mean an already state of wholeness as people don't know this, but it's like they're just remembering that you already got everything that you need to. Now it's just giving yourself permission to receive mm-hmm. that. That's it. Permission. We mm-hmm. have permission. Mm-hmm. You got to write your permission. You got to sign <laughs> your permission slip. I like wow. the permission and I like the remembering because I feel like, you know, sometimes I think about like, you know, okay, when I was like in my twenties and I was like carefree and, you know, I didn't have all the burdens of the world on me or whatever. And I think of myself and I think to that time and I'm like, that person still lives in me. That's not like, that's not like somebody else. That's, me it's just that's me that wasn't crumb pressed you know what i mean like you know pushed down into whatever this box is that you know we kind of put ourselves in but it definitely you know everything you're saying i I feel like it's so powerful and i'm looking at the messages here um that they wrote and someone said we never fully in my opinion are slash were recognized for our service and i feel like last year pulled on our heartstrings to care and save our mental health um, that's Tashiana. And she also says, I'm taking unemployment next pandemic. Ha ha ha. She's like, I ain't is, dealing with that. <laughs> this, this is important because there's this lack of recognition. And I believe, and I'm, I'm with you, as I feel like nurses, I'll say, I'll just say nurses are like the heartbeat of healthcare. Y'all the most abundant, mm-hmm. I believe, profession in all of healthcare. Y'all do more than the gray and ad, Gray's Anatomy portrays. Like y'all do a lot, a lot more than what society even knows or thinks that you do. So that's very important. So quick side note, snap for yourselves, please. <laughs> snap for yourselves, snap for yourselves and give yourself a pat on the back for all, all that you do that's and be. Not- and the question is, do you recognize yourself for mm-hmm. all that you have done? Mm-hmm. 
What have you done to celebrate yourself? What have you, when's the last time you had gratitude for the sweat equity you've cultivated for you to be here? Are you just showing up to just do some more? But when's the last time you gave yourself permission to really celebrate yourself? Because if you don't do that for yourself, of course, when society isn't doing that for you, you're gonna be like, well, they're not recognizing me, but, but, or, and mm -hmm. how can we do that for ourselves so that way we're serving out of a state of abundance and not this uh, this validate this not that she's seeking or not anybody seeking it this validation per se this this badge it's like that's where this badge of burnout that comes from it's like but look like I'm suffering but look I did it but look like I'm I'm doing it like I'm I'm giving away myself so that way others can live but it's like who's who decided that it needs to be that way mm. and if you did cool however is this the life that you want to live and is right. this doesn't sustainable be, and honoring doesn't have to be that way i think is the you know the the key mm -hmm. yeah you know there's also this um what they say misery loves company because i feel like that's also mm -hmm. a thing it's like even our trauma culture, bonding even our culture of nursing is kind of like oppressive sometimes because we're constantly talking about how bad things are right as opposed to like you said celebrating and highlighting those positive things like you know when i have people who ask me about becoming a nurse and i obviously don't want to discourage them so i look into like what are the positives what are the gems of this profession that i can you know you know give someone and i'm always like look in this profession for me i feel like this is the most like versatile career that you can possibly have because you can be a nurse mm, in so many different ways fields places i mean you can be a flight nurse and you know be on planes and you can you know you can be a nurse at the nascar you know what i'm saying you can be you can be anywhere you i mean when i went to disney world disneyland i fell they sent a nurse to my room i'm like man i could be the disney nurse um you know but That's you can far. also work in different settings work in different you know um in a school setting you can work with kids you can work with you know cancer i mean you can do just about anything with this profession so i feel like it's definitely a versatile career um and because of that also it's like like you said you have to find community so i feel like one of the things that's helped me significantly from burning out at times is just finding other people who i can be inspired by because of you know where they are in their nursing career things that they're doing there are some positives there you know but creating that community like you said that's going to be able to support and lift us up I'm gonna, uh, because I wanna make sure that you have enough time for your meditation too, Dr. Jamal. So I'm gonna sure. see if there's any more questions and I'm gonna let you kind of, you know, if you wanna share anything with us, what I'll do is it's 3.40 now. So maybe like 10 more minutes and then I'll give you 10 minutes to do the meditation. If you guys oh, are in the perfect. Cannabis Nurses of Color group and you would like to come on the Zoom with us, go in there, there's a link to come on the Zoom because I'll we will turn off the live feed and then we'll have some intimate time with Dr. Jamal where he can answer some questions for us. So if you want yes, to take Q &A, that, big fan make of sure to big hop Q &A. on to the Zoom um, <laughs> inside the members group, okay? All right. Dr. Dr. Jamal, while Sandra's looking at that, I, I do see that Shonda, which is interesting after your last um, talk, she said, "This is that is awesome. Never recognize me with a, with a frown face. I mean, with a crying face, that is, mm. oh my God, that is mm. never recognized me, mm. you know? And that goes back to, I think what I gather from that is not expecting others to do what you can do for yourself. Cause she said, Ooh, never recognize good. me. Mm. So I, I thought that was deep. So thank you for mm. sharing that with us. Mm. You are so welcome. Yeah, no, you're, you're so welcome. And I think it's going to set up the meditation really wonderfully as uh, I, we got this analogy as uh, to be uh, clear and concise, you know, me and my mentor, Dr. Brett Jones, um, we're gonna be working with the University of Arizona and I'm so excited because I've been calling this in and I, I can't wait to work with the athletes, but it stemmed from the idea. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm super excited because I was, I was a sprinter, um, by the way, in undergrad. So my sweat equity kind of comes from an athletic background that was transmuted and got me through school. Um, 
the bigness of that though is that there's these like first string starters say on the football team basketball team whatever sport it might be those are the starters those are the stars if you will then there's the second string which is like if the first string gets hurt then the second string will step up then there's a third then there's a fourth the question that we're starting to cultivate and work on is like you know what is the ideal teammate or who is the ideal teammate so whether you're a first string well how are you showing up for your second strings how are you showing up for your third strings you know how are you being the image like what sandra just offered how are you being the image which is by the way one of the quickest way to manifest and change your life if you have an image of some way of being of relationship of finances of how they're showing up their energy how they speak pick an attribute and go find someone that inspires you because you are a product of your five most people you're around, five bank accounts you're around, five biggest smiles you're around, five biggest hugs and qualities that you're around. Whatever you want to be, surround yourself with where you want to be so that way you can go there a lot quicker. Back to the ideal teammate. That's you know, why I'm with the, Ivory, because she makes me better. There we there we go. And it's 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 a ping pong match. Like y'all, <laughs> it's it's the okay, oh, this is good. It's the give <laughs> and the receive. Mm -hmm. right. so it's like you know how can we show up good how can we show up you know as the fourth string how can i like example how can i bust my butt in practice so that way that third string and that second string are better because of me how can we show up in the hospitals in the uh, private practices how can we show up for each other how can we reflect greatness at each other you know remind each other you know with, whether we're shonda or whoever it may be you know who's around her so i'd be like hey sis hey hey you're doing great, by the way. Yes. Yeah. It's like, ooh, it's like, dang, sis, I needed that today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll go deeper into the meditation and play with that, though. But I just want to really acknowledge that because yeah. if we don't acknowledge ourselves, what's the point of this? You're just yeah. gonna keep doing. It. If you don't cultivate that positive neuro association with uh, you accomplishing something, you doing something, you you calling in a higher energetic signature that that pattern isn't going to be reinforced and therefore we're just doing for the sake of doing when it's like well what if we were being for the sake of being wow y'all got me fired being. up it's Sunday. yeah <laughs> that's good i love it oh my gosh dr jamal we're gonna have to bring you back again because i feel like yeah. You know, I'm here for it, sis. Yes, I'm here I'm for so, it. So excited. This was so amazing. I'm gonna actually give you, you know, whatever time you need to kind of get to get get yourself set up for your meditation. And I'm gonna give people just like one or two minutes to to hop in if they want. If you guys want to yeah. hop on, you are welcome to do that. Um and I'll then do like one I thing said, as well. Once we you? are done with the meditation, I will be ending the live stream. But if you're inside the Cannabis Nurse of Color members group, you can join us on the Zoom, all right? Um, and then also, Boom. if you are wanting to reach out to Dr. Jamal, I'm gonna put his link in the comments here. Um, he does coaching, obviously, because, oh, he put it in there himself. I figured, I figured this out. Just in case anyone has to go right now, I was like, yes. hey, if y'all need to go right now, please, or if y'all scared to meditate, that's okay too, but I dropped two links. Yeah. I just Don't edited my calendar. Here's what I'm gonna tell you also, and I know this is gonna sound, yeah, well, whatever. Do it. Meditation is hard because I don't like all the sounds of different people's voices, okay? So you have a great voice, and here's the other thing. It's nice to hear a person of color on the other side sometimes when you're doing these meditations. That's real. And that's, that's real. real thing. It's a real thing is I feel like, okay, I'm talking to somebody, we're walking in the hood. This is my person, this is my friend. You know what I'm saying? It just feels familiar. It feels comfortable. Yeah. Um, it was just, it was really awesome. So thank you for that. Um, I thought that, you know, I, I was sending it out to people. I couldn't send it out fast enough because I'm just like, this is, we need more of this. Um, we need more of these voices. We need, you know, if y'all do meditation, come on, you know, get, get, get in here, do some of this and definitely, you know, tap into these resources that are out there you know what you did with that meditation was so helpful and so thank you so much for that gift um make sure you're following dr jamal he is on instagram at dr jamal Fruster, f-r-u-s-t-e-r um and it's he's actually put it in the comments here and um i'm gonna let you take it away with Ooh, the meditation I'm excited. yes
I'm definitely excited. Yeah, anyone hop on in. I dropped two of my links. Uh, I love to sit with you just for for free, um, as I'd love to hear you, as it's a burnout strategy call, but it's just a life strategy call, really, because once more, we can acknowledge as that's the first step of healing. But if you have the space, there's 30 minute slot, there's an hour slot. I'm opening up practice, not this week, but the following week. So this is one of the last weeks where I have a lot more space for that. So totally encourage y'all like Sandra and Ivory. Just want to say thank you first and foremost for even inviting me, for even holding this, for building this community. So shout out to y'all as I just, this has been so much fun uh, to talk about something that can be very heavy. And now we get to go someplace where we, where we want to go. So I'm a, I'm a position myself real quick, but uh, go ahead. You. Thank you so much. Thank it's you, great. Dr. J. Powerful, yes. Yes, you got it, you got it. So uh, feel free if you're listening in on Facebook Live or you know, you're know tuning in on the Zoom, I want y'all to get and sit in a comfortable space, comfortable space so that way you can be in a state of ease. You can even shoot, you can even lay on the ground. You don't need to sit cross-legged let your hips and legs go numb. At least my legs go numb when I do that. So yeah, feel free to cut off the video. And I just want you to take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Let this be an invitation for you to slow down. Let this be an invitation for you to come back home. Breathe in through the nose for three seconds. Two, one, exhale nice and slow out the mouth. Three, two, one, one more time. Cycle in, breathe through the nose. Two, one, exhale, shake your hands out, shake your shoulders out, let the tension go. Good, if you're sitting, stack your ears over your shoulders, shoulders over your hips, if you're standing, Find just an ideal tension state so that way you can be at peace in your body and you can begin to observe your thoughts as we go on this journey for the next several minutes on what it means to be the ideal teammate or the ideal coworker. I want you to picture yourself in your car before you even step foot in that hospital, before you step foot in that private practice, before you step into, shoot, even your office at home if you're working remotely. What is the energy of the boss, of the queen, of the king, who is stepping into that space to affect change? How does he or she interact with their practice members, with their patients, and with their doctors? What kind of smile does she have on her face? Not just at the beginning of the day. Nah, 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 nah. What kind of smile does she have at the end of her day? See, as the medicine is in your energy. So what is the energy that you want people to experience when you first step in that door? When they feel you walk in, even before you enter that door. Picture her. How do you show up for your peers that might be struggling? Not that you need to fix them. No, 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 no. But what is the energy that you want them to see? And it breathes life into them. It, it makes them feel lighter. It makes them feel better. It makes them feel clearer. It makes them feel more inspired and they have more energy out of nowhere. What is the image that you wish to see? What would be inspiring for you? Who do you want to see that's walking in alignment and on purpose? What does that palpate like? What does that look like when a patient looks like you, looks at you in the eyes and asks if you can help me? And you can look at them with certainty and clarity and say, yes, you're in the right place. What is the energy of your department as a unit? from the most senior nurse to the youngest nurse, to the interns, shoot. As nurses, y'all don't need to eat your young, but you get to cultivate your young. 
So what are the wonderful seeds that you want to sow of inspiration, of love, of energetic being, of happiness, of vitality? What would it look like if a department were to be working in cohesion and inclusion and happiness and in servitude? not just to themselves, but to each other. How would that department uplift the hospital? How would their energy inspire and excite the custodial staff, the cafeteria workers, the physicians who want to treat y'all better because y'all are treating yourselves better. They feel called to do the work because y'all are doing the work. What would it look like if the Department of Nursing, all of the departments, don't matter if it's ICU, don't matter if it's emergency, don't matter if it's NICU, don't matter whoever it may be, but y'all just vibrating at a different energy and the physicians are like, whoa, we need to do better. How would it feel if the heartbeat of healthcare that is nurses was beating strongly and in integrity and in full recognition of their wholeness and happiness in full alignment of why they first got into healthcare? What would it feel like if y'all were one of the first people that were sought out in a preventative paradigm or in an alternative paradigm offering y'all medicine that is cannabis? What would it look like if you were fully accepted because you were fully accepting of yourself? How big would you smile? Go ahead, bring it to your face in this moment and breathe it in. Hmm. What's it feel like to be in full sovereignty, kings and queens, that you are right where you're supposed to be? And as you bring this beautiful day to a close, you're high-fiving your people, you're hugging your people, you're bidding them adieu, you're sending the emails, closing days out, you're sealing this container of what it means as you now have stronger boundaries of what it means to be at work. How do you close the door to your day? Do you burn some Palo Santo? Do you say, thank you, thank you, thank you? Do you bow your head to the hospital? Do you, do you wipe your hands off your, your, your scrub pants? Do you take off this energetic jacket of work? What do you do to close practice? See it, visualize it, breathe that in and exhale out work. <sighs> And as you're walking, whether it be back to the bedroom, whether it be outside, whether it be to your car, whether it be in the garage, see yourself heading back to your car, heading back home as you bring to close this beautiful day of being the ideal teammate, the ideal coworker. And whenever you're ready, breathe in through the nose one more time Exhale, let everything go. <sighs> and open your eyes whenever you're ready. That was beautiful. Feel, Thank you. Feel free to get a little stretching too. I know. Get it out there. Oh mm. my goodness. That was amazing. Thank you so, so much. You guys can always tap back into this live because it is on our stream, on our Facebook. Oh, page. fantastic. Um, so always you can tap back into this information. It's one of the resources that we like to have on here. That's why we like to bring all these speakers here because we want to make sure yeah. that you guys have resources that you can use. So in thank addition, you. This, yes. Tap into, you know, the the links that Dr. Jamal posted if you want to connect with him outside of here. And we thank you so much for tuning in today for our live speaker series. Um, just to let you guys know, next month, 
Um, we will be having Dr. Bedeau. She's coming to us from the University of Miami, and she's going to be talking about some of the research and work that she's doing there at, in, in conjunction with their nursing program. So I thought it would be good to see kind of real life how um, cannabis nursing and all of these different pathways connect into actual roles, traditional roles. So she works at a university and they have a cannabis institute there and it's gonna be awesome to kind of see what the future of cannabis nursing can look like and what some of these programs and research opportunities could look like. So I hope you guys will tune in to us next month. We'll have some more information coming out on that. And Dr. Jamal, woo! Yay! We're not done with you. I'm just going to end it live and we'll continue talking. But I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Ivory, I don't know if yes, you have anything else you wanted to add. That's oh, it. Other, other than thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. Mm, Ivory, I'm really looking forward to connecting later on. I appreciate your yeah. energy. It's good to, <laughs> good to feel your face. Good to feel that draw, too. Like, good, like it's really, it, it really, it really hits differently. But, uh, man, if I could just offer, you know, one last thing. Just know the energy or the medicine is in your energy. Mm. Mm. Medicine is in your energy. And I hope that y'all get to appreciate your own medicine as you get to experience and share with more of the world from a very integrated embodied space. Ooh. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Jamal. All right, we are gonna kick off here. We're gonna continue talking to you um, behind the scenes. Thank you everyone who joined, we are so, I'm grateful for you guys listening in, tuning in. I hope you found this uh, engaging and resourceful and empowering like we did. Um, and we will see you guys next month. Take care.